Doctors of Reddit, what is the most heart-wrenching diagnosis you've ever had to give? Maybe a bit late, but a friend of mine had a case where this couple who were trying for about 5 years to have babies, fertility problems, with a ton of money spent, discovered that their 4 months old baby had cancer and would probably won't finish his year. Apparently, the father had a mental breakdown at the spot and had to be hospitalized. Freaking heck. This might be the worst of the thread. I hope at some point they can move on and maybe adopt or have a surrogate. They seem to have a lot of love to give a child. Not a doc but used to teach lunchtime EFL classes at a hospital and the heart surgeon comes in with a really long face. He had one kid come in who had no real symptoms but the valves into his heart were narrowing so without surgery he was doomed in the long term. So they decided to cut out one small valve and one big valve and transplant the big valve to where the small valve had been removed and put an artificial valve where the big valve had been at least that was the gist of it. Long time ago and I don't know medical terminology at all. The transplant didn't take and the kid died. He'd just come in from an hour of the parents screaming at him for killing their kid. They were taking it especially badly since the kid wasn't displaying any symptoms before the operation. And this guy was really good at his job. He had awards for open heart surgery on premiers and did a successful heart and two lung transplant of a woman who had lung cancer spread of her heart and but everyone has things go wrong. Just know I could never do a job where the off days are people die. Really didn't know what to say to the guy. I have a patient I've seen for 4 years. Really nice guy. Couple of minor health issues. His wife has been going through treatments for breast cancer, then brain cancer, since I've met him and is finally doing well. He came in with unintentional weight loss about 2 months ago, though noted that he actually felt pretty good overall. He had lost about 20 pounds in 2 months without trying. He thought maybe his diabetes was just a bit out of control as this is how his diabetes had presented initially. We did a workup that took a while and bottom line is he ended up finding that he has pancreatic cancer. Had to bring him and his wife in and explain that while she was doing much better, he has likely a very short time to live. You're not supposed to get close to patients or necessarily get attached. But this one was hard to do. When I saw the results of his CT scan initially I just felt dread and sadness. I just dreaded having to tell them the news. I felt horrible for them. I just wanted to be able to put it off forever. But obviously it had to be done. That the reason the little girl was not waking up was because mother's boyfriend had beaten her to the point she had a subdural hemorrhage. Cousin's boyfriend beat her to yo to death for crying. It's always freaking painful when that happens to a kid. Not a doctor, but a nurse. I had a patient who was 31. She was admitted with weight loss, dehydration, intractable nausea, fatigue, and abdominal pain. Her mother had just passed 3 months prior to her admission due to colon cancer. She was diagnosed with uterine cancer. Though I didn't give her the initial diagnosis, as that is the doctor's role, I was the one present with the family trying to answer questions about the options and what to expect. She was initially a hopeful candidate for surgical removal of the tumor, and it was tough trying to help her cope with never being able to have children. Her boyfriend couldn't handle the situation and broke off the relationship. I have no idea what their relationship was like or how long they had been dating. So I don't judge him. It was just so hard to watch her grappling with the loss of her mother, the loss of hope for having a baby, then feeling abandoned by her so. It was then discovered the cancer was stage 4, meaning it had spread, and there was no surgical option. They tried chemotherapy, but this was an aggressive and rapidly progressing disease. I had to explain to the family how her sudden dementia and confusion was caused by the metastasizing tumors reaching her brain. She was in the hospital for about 4 months before she passed. Jesus. I'm 31. Frick, life is just cruel and pointless sometimes. My dad is an ophthalmologist, eye surgeon. He always goes back to the same experience. Retinoblastoma is a cancer that mostly affects children. You can detect it if the usual red eye in flash photos is white in one, or both, eyes. It can be hereditary. Treatment can be attempted, but if not caught early enough, the only way to try to save the patient is to enucleate, remove, the eye. When he was a resident, there was a 5 year old girl in the hospital. She'd had her left eye enucleated a few weeks prior. In a follow up scan, they found tumors in her right eye as well, and had determined it needed to be enucleated as well. 
She came out of that surgery with her head bandage up. Her parents were by her bedside when the nurse removed the bandages. Once they were off, this 5 year old girl sat up and just said, Daddy, I can't see you. This is the most heartbreaking post I've read today. Had to be on the team that told someone that the reason they can't get pregnant is because of a tumor on the top of her uterus. Turned out to be cancer. And that not only would she be a mother, it had spread and she had 9-12 months at best. That is heartbreaking. Holy heck. Just imagine receiving that prognosis when just the day before your concern was why you're not able to be pregnant. Now, you have a year to live. I honestly don't know what I would do with myself. I'm sitting here moping about work when there are people out there hearing this kinda news. I grew up in the US, but went to med school in India. A few years ago, during my pediatric rotation of internship, I had an 11 year old patient with worsening seizures and other neurological symptoms. He was from a rural village and had slipped through cracks of the vaccination program. And as it turned out, he had a history of measles as an infant. We diagnosed him with subacute sclerosing penencephalitis, a progressive and fatal complication of measles with an onset years after the initial infection. It was heartbreaking trying explain to the parents that their child had months to a year left and that the cause was something that happened almost a decade ago. That's awful. I work in nursing and my colleague dealt with a lad in A&E. He was young, just broke up with his girlfriend and took an overdose. He was unconscious but the damage was done. All his organs were failing and there was no chance of getting matching transplants. Not that he would survive an attempt to replace all his vitals in one go. He eventually came round, not sure if naturally or woken from an induced coma. I forget, he realized what he had done. Thanked the nurses for saving his life and chalked it up as a close call and now realized he wanted to live. The doctor had to tell him he was going to die in a few hours. They could make him comfortable to say his goodbyes but there was nothing else they could do to actually save him. He spent the rest of the night with his family and died a few hours later. Now I've seen some crap. But that would probably have ended my career. A close friend is a doctor. And I know his toughest news to pass was to the parents of a 17 year old boy. He wanted off of life support. He had been paralyzed in a motorcycle accident. And could only communicate through yes or no answers. The boy was unable to tell his parents. And hoped that his doctor would understand and break it to them. After making sure that the patient had thought it through. He did as he asked. And ultimately the boy got his wish. Neuropsychologist at a hospital. I get the title doctor from having PhD, if that matters. The most emotional conversation I've ever had to have with any patient was with a lovely elderly couple and their daughter. The couple met in school, and had been together ever since, had one child, and were both retired comfortably. They were living in a granny flat behind the daughter's house, but were still very independent. They had both been coming in for neurological exams, because they had been experiencing some memory loss and we were keeping track of their progress with various tests. Long story short, I had to tell this couple and their daughter that they were both exhibiting the early signs of dementia and that it was likely going to get worse with time. Thankfully they had periods of lucidity still, and so we were able to set up some management plans for them, but the daughter looked like we had just ripped her whole world away. I've never seen someone in so much pain be so strong. She was positive and supportive and reassuring them, but I could see that she just wanted to break down right there. She would come back every few months for counseling, we run a separate clinic too, and I kept seeing her after the couple passed away, and she is doing much better. From having a parent with dementia myself, I could only imagine the pain of having both parents succumb at about the same time. I didn't tell the diagnosis to the patient, but diagnosed it yesterday on his CT scan. And it has been weighing heavily on my mind. Patient with stage IV colon cancer. His colon perforated. And infection from the bacteria in his colon spread to his testicle. And there was likely also infection around his aorta. They took out the colon and the testicle. Amazingly, he was discharged from the hospital. Came back a few days ago. Repeat CT showed the infection caused a huge aneurysm. Dilation of his aorta. And it is leaking blood. So basically it is going to rupture and he will die almost instantly. Or, maybe it slowly leaks out and death happens more insidiously. I can't imagine being told you have a ticking time bomb inside of you and may have hours, days, or maybe weeks. 
Not a doctor. I'm an ophthalmic assistant. Recently, we had a woman, in her late 60s, referred to our eye clinic from the emergency room. Very nice lady, pleasant. Woman states she had dry eye condition, and her dry eye has made her vision gray and blurry the last few weeks. Has been increasing her artificial tear use, but she woke up with all black vision in one eye. As she's telling me this, I know there's no way dry eye causes these symptoms. She's lucid, just uneducated, I guess, because she thinks she needs better artificial tears. She faithfully gets her eyes checked every year by her daughter who's an optometrist. Diagnosis, end stage glaucoma, permanently blind in one eye, the other eye has permanent peripheral vision loss. The cupping of her optic nerve should have been an indicator of glaucoma years ago. Her eye pressure on the now blind eye was above 60, normal pressure is below 25. Could have been diagnosed, and treated, and likely never hit this point. People don't feel glaucoma, to the patient. This seems sudden, but it's a process which takes time, usually several years for her type glaucoma. As the doctor was explaining the reason for vision loss, it was really sad to see this sweet woman in denial disbelieving, and planning on a second opinion with her optometrist daughter. Pretty sure she was still just hoping to get better artificial tears to clear the black vision. Lady's whole life is going to change. She won't pass a DMV vision test, lost her depth perception, is now considered legally blind. I can't imagine the guilt the daughter will have for not catching the condition. I'm trying to figure out why not. Maybe they only were checking for glasses prescription every year, and not dilating to look at eye health? Anyway, it makes me very sad to think of them at future family events. I can't choose. 1. You have penile cancer. If we amputate it will be virtually curative. Or you die in 2-3 years. 2. You have complex regional pain syndrome. Type 1. Cold variant. You will likely lose the use of your right arm as it withers away. Maybe it will spread to your left also. All while experiencing pain worse than burning to death. Probably until you die. Or my fiance has CRPS and I just got very very sad. Had a lady follow up with me in the office after being discharged from a different hospital system without a diagnosis as to why she was jaundiced. I knew something bad was brewing so I ordered a stat MRI of her liver and found a cholangiocarcinoma, tumor of the bile ducts, in a location which was incurable. I had her back in the office within 48 hours and told her the news as gently as I could. She just said this must be really hard for you. I just lost it and started crying immediately. I couldn't believe she though of me in that moment. We hugged and cried for a while and she was very appreciative. Not a doctor but I can tell you my doctor's moment. I had an appointment that she was a little late to. Came in, not herself. She said that her colleague in the office had just given a cervical cancer diagnosis to the youngest person ever diagnosed in the practice. I just lost my cousin after a battle with cervical cancer. She was mid-twenties. Fought so hard. Had a full hysterectomy. Knew they'd never have children. Dealt with that blow. Lost a limb when the cancer spread. Eventually couldn't fight anymore. We both worked very hard to keep it together and get that prescription for my headache medicine filled. As though either of us cared. Reminds me of a when doctor. Green has his brain tumor and some little girl is whining. He says something like I have an inoperable brain tumor. I win. Doctor now. This happened when I was a neurosurgery extern in LA. Was in surgery and got paged from our other hospital that a kid, 19 years old, was found unconscious in the hospital hallway and was initially brought in for dehydration and a high fever. We couldn't leave in the middle of surgery and had him transported to our hospital. As soon as he got there, did all the scans and exams and realized he had bled everywhere in his brain and was now brain dead. Bacterial meningitis was the final diagnosis, and had to tell the family. I spoke Spanish. Attending did not. Tried explaining to them that there was nothing we could do from this point forward. Family didn't understand, and finally asked point blank is he going to die and I responded yes and they all started screaming. Worst position to be in when family friends think you can do something to help their loved one. And despite all the training sometimes it's impossible. It's a horrible feeling because you wish you could do something. I still think about that kid. Not a doc but I was with a friend of mine when she had a terrible diagnosis. 
At 27 she was diagnosed with brain cancer and only had a couple months to live. It was terrible enough but I felt devastated to hear that something so terrible could happen to her. She was one of the most positive and hardworking girls I knew. At 18 she took in her 4 siblings and became their legal guardian. She gave up going to a good school for college to work multiple jobs and crazy hours to provide for her family and essentially raise the two younger children. The youngest was 4 at the time. She gave them a great childhood and guided them and let them have as normal of a childhood as they could. She always tried to make sure they had money so the kids could join clubs, play sports whatever and would often go hungry for days and none of these kids knew the true extent of what she did for them. The oldest kid, 16 stroke 17 at the start, was terrible. He was young who was still grieving the loss of two parents so he readily took all his anger out on her and was great at wasting money and just adding stress. But she was so patient and a better parent than I could have ever been and got through to him. He's a good young man now, but it was terrible knowing what her family and those kids would have to go through after everything they had gotten through. The last couple years before the diagnosis had been good. Finances weren't an issue and she was going to night school and they were happy. Not the doctor but the patient. A number of years ago I had a lump in my neck. My family doctor thought it was a blocked lymph node following that cold or flu I'd had a few weeks earlier. My doctor leaves the city, and I'm without a family doctor. Fast forward one, one stroke two years, and I get a GP again. One of the first things she does is refer me to a surgeon about this. It's visible without touching at this point. Doesn't take long to get an appointment, and when I tell a friend that works at the hospital, she informs me he is an oncologist, and one of the best. Doctor is wonderful, explains he suspects non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and that this particular type of cancer has a good survival rate, and orders a biopsy, done the very next day. I'm aware this has been there a long time at this point. Three anxious weeks later, I have the first act on a Monday morning. Doctor comes in apologizing for not having reviewed my results in advance and opens my file. Let's out this huge sigh and puts his head down on his folded arms on top of my folder. Looks up and I can see the tears glistening in his eyes. And my heart sinks through the bottom of chair. I've trying so hard not to worry in advance. You don't have cancer. I was so sure you had cancer. I never get to tell anyone good news. You just made my day, gets up and hugs me, proceeds to refer me to ear nose and throat for surgical removal of a brachial cyst. So thank you all you doctors that deliver bad news day in and day out with compassion. I really thought that ending was going somewhere else, glad it didn't. I work in physical therapy. We had a semi driver who had a spinal cord injury from a driving accident. His parents disowned him because he was gay and wouldn't help with his medical bills or let him stay at their house. He had lived out of his truck and was essentially homeless. We tried to keep him approved to stay in the hospital as long as possible, but eventually we had to tell him we couldn't keep him there anymore and it broke everyone's heart. And because of his injuries none of the homeless shelters could take him because they didn't have the facilities to accommodate him. I moved to a different unit shortly after so I never found out what happened to him. Not a doctor, but a nurse. Elderly woman brought in by daughter to a for possible stroke. Showed up to my floor a few hours later. Alone. Completely immobile and constantly sleeping. Unable to speak. Palliative care nurse spoke to daughter over phone. Gently trying to explain that since the doctors had determined her mother to be terminal. It would be best to make her a DNR. Do not resuscitate. No CPR breathing tube BTC. If she were to go into cardiac or respiratory arrest, daughter refused to listen, saying that her mother was a fighter, didn't seem to understand that DNR doesn't mean we stop treating her with meds or antibiotics or oxygen, but it does mean that we won't break her ribs while she can feel every second of it or ram a tube down her throat so it feels like she's suffocating even though it's breathing mechanically for her. I cared for that poor lady 3 days straight, her only visitors were her pastor and his wife, and she finally coded the third night, had to be resuscitated 4 times throughout the shift with the breaking of bones and whole bit before they finally let her be at peace. The daughter was called when she first started going downhill, she still hadn't come by the time I came in for day shift, everyone should have a medical plan if you want CPR, ventilator, or feeding tube, 
and if you want them for the rest of your life or only a short term trial period to see if you're going to recover. If you don't deal with an unpleasant subject while you have the mental and physical fortitude, cross your fingers that you have a healthcare team that can choose the right words to say to your grieving family stuck making those decisions for you. I had a patient whose newborn baby wasn't expected to live. The baby's condition was a surprise to the mother and her family. I got to sit in while the doctor tried to explain that the baby was doing very poorly. The mom and family remained quite optimistic. Fast forward to a few hours later and the doctor returned to tell the patient, in a shared room, that her baby was doing very poorly and wasn't expected to make it. Doctor was frustrated that the, very young, mother wasn't reacting the way she wanted. Told me that she was at the end of her bag of tricks and was upset that mom wasn't responding to her sudden news. Granted this poor girl just gave birth to a very medically unstable baby that she had no forewarning about. I ended up having to try to talk mom into seeing her baby, knowing basically nothing other than the prognosis was very poor. It was horrible all around. The way the doctor approached the situation. The way mom was too young and optimistic. I'll see him later. Trying to remain as neutral as possible while attending to four other mom baby pairs that were happy as can be. I believe the baby ended up passing in the next couple days. It was incredibly sad. While I was on Euroconsults, a 23 year old girl came in complaining of a headache for 6 months. At first I thought she was exaggerating, possibly looking for painkillers. Then I saw she'd actually been to an outpatient neurologist who tried every med under the sun for presumed migraines, and had gotten a CT scan and MRI without contrast, both unrevealing. The pain became unbearable so the girl came to the hospital and was admitted for further workup. Right after she is admitted, per our recommendation, she gets an MRI with contrast, which shows leptomeningeal carcinomatosis, cancer metastases all over the matter covering her brain. I had gone home for the day by the time the result was read, I was just on consult service, but the attending from the primary medical team sat down with the girl around 7pm that night and explained she had cancer, and they didn't know where it was coming from yet. He explained the most likely places were either her stomach or her uterus. He asked if she wanted help in telling her family, who had also gone home to rest for the evening after being at bedside all day. But the patient decided to have tests done to find where the primary cancer was first so she would have a better idea of what the plan was moving forward when she told her family. The next day, I get to the hospital around 9am. Consult service hours are nice. I pull up my patient list, and she's listed as not being in the hospital anymore. I thought maybe she signed out against medical advice. I open her chart to find out that around 6.30 that morning, the patient became altered and then quickly unresponsive. Code was called, CPR started, the whole works, her family shows up at around 7.15am to see a team of doctors doing chest compressions, the team hadn't even had time to inform them of the code yet, because it all happened so fast, remember, these people had no idea the girl had cancer or even anything seriously wrong with her, other than her headache, they were devastated and initially insisted that everything be done to keep her alive. But after witnessing a few rounds of CPR, they asked for the priest to come and give her her last rites, and she passed away. I cried so hard I couldn't see patients for most of the day. This poor young girl, all of a sudden just gone, and her poor family who had no idea it was coming. She was trying to protect them and give them hope. Such a mature decision for someone her age. But they ended up in pain anyway. So tragic. I remember her often as an example of how fragile life is. Pretty dark thread so I'm here to add some funnies. Not me but my dad. Worked at Jackson Memorial. Had a very very obese woman come in after falling and hitting her head. Went to run a CT or CAT scan. Not sure which. And she was too fat to fit into it. My dad was the lucky man who had to tell this woman they were taking her to the metro zoo where they had scanners meant for hippos. That would fit her. Not a doctor, med student who have just completed my ophthalmology rotation. A 38 year old male patient came in, with a loss of vision of his left eye and peripheral vision on his right eye. He was confident that the doctors will fix his eyes, since this was among the best ophthalmology centers in the country. When the doctor explained that the damage was permanent and surgery was the only option to save whatever left of his right eye. 
He remained calm but we could clearly see that he was trying to hold back tears. The doctor, despite of her 20 years of experience with glaucoma, told me that it would never get easier having to explain to a patient about their vision loss, especially with the younger ones, whose their entire world was going to fall off after the diagnosis after the di I'm not a doctor but I'm the youngest son in a family of four, the only college graduate and I work in hospital administration. So to my parents, I'm a doctor, I had to explain to my mother, my father, and my older siblings that mom had pancreatic cancer. I had to explain to my mom when she woke up that her attempted surgery to remove the tumor, that the surgery failed. I had to watch as the massive tumor caused her unbearable pain. Explain to her that her pain was not going to stop. That she was being put on high dose dilaudid. Explain to the doctors that it wasn't helping. That she was hallucinating. That she was screaming and asking to die all day every day. I had to beg a major cancer hospital for help. And they helped us. They stopped her pain. They got her eating again. They shrunk her tumor and gave her time. Then when everything was going good. I had to explain to her and my family that she had sudden kidney failure and that she was going to need to go into hospice. She did pass away about a year after her diagnosis, but she never was in pain again and she was able to say all her goodbyes. Probably the worst and best times of my life. Hard, but the good times we had at the end is all I can remember now. Fair few, worked in quite a few specialities, in the air, strokes and heart attacks. Psychiatry, diagnosing a young teenager with schizophrenia, in neurology, dementia, breast cancer in general surgery, on the wards on call as a junior, death, all difficult in their own ways. Anything related to the brain hits me hard though, because of its effect on personality and just being. Young people being diagnosed with schizophrenia is one of the most horrible things. It's truly heartbreaking, and it's always the ones with the most potential. I had a patient come in talking about how they were recently in remission from lung cancer 6 months ago had just finished treatments and was ecstatic about their oncologist's visit a week ago that said everything was normal. Patient came to the ED with dizziness and assumed it was just dehydration. My neuro exam showed some dysmetria, poor coordination, so I can scan them. Sure enough, brain cancer, they were crushed. I think, out of all the bad news I've given. The times I have had to tell a family that their loved one has had a devastating brain injury and is brain dead have probably been the worst. That or when I am taking a patient to surgery who we all know is going to die, and I have to tell the family that the patient is a really high risk of dying in the or wheeling them out of the room and knowing that their family may never see them alive again feels pretty bad. Family member here. When my mother was declared brain dead after an asthma attack it was the hardest thing I had to hear. My family chose to take her off of life support and donate her organs. I remember the doctor, she looked young and could not have been doing it for long, tell my dad we were doing the right thing. I had a 21 year old come in right around new years a few years ago. His serious girlfriend made him come in because he had lost a little bit of weight and was feeling tired. He told me that he works about 60-70 hours a week and loved his job, but that he blamed his job for the fatigue. He wasn't sleeping well and complained of headaches nearly every day. This had been going on for the last 3 weeks. So I do a once over and immediately notice his spleen is about 3 times too big. When I asked him if he had noticed this, he mentioned that he had but didn't stop to think about it. I grab an US and some blood work. Ultrasound shows a 17 cm spleen, normal is 11 cm, and at this point I'm praying the kid has mono and is just having a major reaction. His white blood cell count came back at 680, normal is 410. We rushed him to see an oncologist who promptly put him in the best hospital for cancer in our area. I later heard the oncologist put all her patients on hold for 3-4 hours while she answered all his questions and pulled some strings to get him the best care. I received a letter from his parents a month later. He was diagnosed with acute myelogenous leukemia and doing well. I'll never forget that kid. Dang. And to think, his girlfriend made him come in. This could have gotten worse. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.